hindsight is 2020, correct? Oh, wait, we're not mentioning that year. Anyway, if we look back at what Joe Biden has said in the past two years, we'll find out what his top priority is, right? Let me explain. Well, I've gone and done it. I've gone down the rabbit hole of trying to find out just what is Joe Biden's top priority. And at the end of the video, you will get to see it all. For now, all I can say is he's no maverick. He's not been a maverick on the war. He's not been a maverick on virtually anything that generally affects the things that people really talk about around their kitchen table. Yep, Joe Biden is no maverick. And we're not even asking him to be. We just want him to stop embarrassing us, the US of A. And that is clearly too difficult. Instead, he'll just go out there and fist bump murderers. Biden was just in Saudi Arabia to play nice with the Saudi crown prince Mohammed bin Salman so he could beg for some oil. And the big greeting was questioned whether Joe would shake his hand or do nothing because MBS is responsible for the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi in 2018. And all this had been said leading up to this moment of will he or won't he? So instead of shaking MBS's hand, because as a foreign leader, you will shake the hands of murderous dictators, Biden takes it to a whole new level of Bro, let's fist bump like, you know, bros do. The Saudi foreign minister says he didn't hear you accuse the crown prince of Khashoggi's murder. Is he telling the truth? No. He was like the fist pump, Mr. President. Why don't you guys talk about something that matters? All right. I'll talk about something that matters, like the smug, narcissistic, attention-seeking, one and only Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who pretends that she is being arrested outside of the Supreme Court while handcuffed. Tell me, where are the handcuffs? She clearly identified as being handcuffed, and so that's her truth. All right, that's enough of that nonsense. Let's get to the question of the day. What is Joe Biden's top priority? Is it just following whatever AOC tells him? Maybe. I'll let you know shortly. But for now, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And please share this video because the videos you are about to see are just worth sharing. But for now, I'll talk about what everyone cares about back here in the good old United States, the economy and how bad Joe and company have made it for pretty much no reason other than trying to push their agenda, whatever that may be. So to the economy. Oh, look, that lovely CPI is up 9.1% overall, a 40 year record high and all while Joe Biden has been president. Huzzah! We're heading in the right direction. Right being an increase in costs of basically everything. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics tells us that prices for food increased 10.4% for the 12 months ending June 2022, the largest increase since February 1981. Prices for food at home rose 12.2% over the last 12 months, the largest increase since April 1979. Prices for food away from home rose 7.7%. Energy prices rose 41.6%. Within the energy category, motor fuel prices, which includes all types of gasoline, increased 60.2% over the year. Gasoline prices increased 59.9%, electricity prices rose 13.7%, natural gas, piped utility gas prices increased 38.4%, prices for new vehicles increased 11.4%, with used cars and trucks up 7.1%, while prices for motor vehicle parts and equipment increased 14.9%. Do you see a trend here? Can someone please explain how we got here? And that brings us to... Where in the world is Kamala Malama Ding Dong? <laughs> yes, please. Let's hear from the wisest of the Biden administration. The one who knows how to make a word salad like no other. Ding Dong, please explain to us what these numbers mean. Uh, before I begin, I will address this month's CPI report. There is no question that we still have work to do. But it is important to note that these numbers do not fully reflect the recent drop in gas prices. Average national gas prices have fallen every day for nearly 30 days. Since mid-June, prices are down 40 cents a gallon. Fighting inflation is one of our administration's top economic priorities, which is why we have taken action to lower the cost of living for Americans, millions of Americans. 
We are releasing one million ba barrels of oil a day from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to lower prices at the pump. Nearly 30 days, people. And it's temporary because of the holiday gas tax, so there's that. And also, if Putin is the reason prices are so high, then thank you, Putin, for allowing them to come back down. Kamalama really is tone deaf, and also the most monotone robot I've seen lately, which you almost have to be to offset a cackle like hers. Uh, um, not today. <laughs> Even with the muzzle, the cackle comes through loud and tone deaf. She has to lie for Joe because he doesn't know what's happening. I can see that she doesn't want to taco about his responsibility in all this. But on the note of tacos, we do have out there the greatest doctor of all doctors named Dr. J who hasn't played basketball. Before we get to her instrumentation in all this, on the note of doctors, the other greatest doctor of all the medical doctors has announced he's retiring. Yes, the Tony the Fouch is hanging up the lies and washing the blood off his hands at the end of Biden's first and likely only term. But why would he choose to retire then? Hmm. I can only imagine. I guess we better stop imagining, even though that's what Joe does. You know, he heard someone say the term recession and got excited to go out to the playground. He really wanted to play kick the can, which is what he continues to do every single day by claiming that everything is fine, nothing to see here. Please disperse, nothing to see here, please. And for all you doubters, keep the hope. It's what Joe is full of. I've seen Joe's character in his optimism. For families who have lost a loved one, kids struggling to find their way, workers out of a job, Joe always works to give people a sense of hope. Not impressed. We weren't impressed in 2012, and we certainly aren't impressed now. But it's not his fault, you see. As Jill told donors, the president had so many hopes and plans for things he wanted to do, but every time you turned around, he had to address the problems of the moment. He's just had so many things thrown his way. Who would have ever thought about what happened with the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade? Well, maybe we saw it coming, but still we didn't believe it. The gun violence in this country is absolutely appalling. We didn't see the war in Ukraine coming. They didn't see much of anything coming. When you're that old and senile, all you really see is the mush bananas in front of you and Ben Matlock on the TV. But alas, before Joe takes his third nap of the day, what is his number one priority? This is our historic moment of crisis and challenge. And unity is the path forward. That's a great asset. More inflation. What a stupid son of a Inflation is robbing them of gains they thought otherwise they would be able to feel. I get it. That's why my top priority is getting prices under control. I want every American to know that I'm taking inflation uh, very seriously and it's my top domestic priority. I've been very clear that fighting inflation is my top economic priority. Well, he's very concerned about inflation, obviously. It's a top priority. And he's also concerned about this price at the pump, and he's going to do what he can to, do to resolve that. That is uh, an important, uh, important priority of the president. And he, you know, we've been clear from day one that we will continue uh, to make this a top priority. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's clearly a top priority, such one that it's still going on and on and on. But there are other priorities that are top priorities, too. So really, it's just one of many in the hopper of priorities. One of the things that I think is really important is we have to be authentic with the American people about what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. Since day one of my administration, we've been doing everything we can to beat this virus. There are countless issues, countless priorities that I talk about here all the time, every day, uh, about different priorities that we have to deal with, whether it's the economy, whether it's COVID, uh, whether it's climate change, uh, whether it's foreign policy issues that we have to deal with and assess, that is how we run the White House. That's how any White House is run. We need to restore the protections of Roe as law of the land. We need to elect officials who will do that. This fall, Roe is on the ballot. 
on banning assault weapons back in 1994, which sunset uh, 10 years later. It was a priority for him then, and it continues to be a priority for him now. Make it a priority. We should make sure that we have in the, no one going to jail for a, a, a drug offense. They go directly mandatory prison. I mean, excuse me, mandatory treatment, not prison. And we fund it. I'm going to stop it right there because in light of the newest revelations about Hunter Biden's crack issues, whether his prostitutes are weighing up correctly or whatnot, Joe's last comment makes me realize that he is speaking directly about his son right there and we should have spotted it back then. Oh wait, we all did. And it's too bad his son didn't hear daddy speaking about him because he was too busy banging those hookers, smoking that crack off of one of the laptops he's left behind in various rooms, but he did make time with his sister to endorse their dad for president on his 73rd attempt at running. We want to tell you what kind of president our dad will be. He will be tough. And honest. Caring and principled. He'll listen. He'll be there when you need him. He'll tell you the truth even when you don't want to hear it. He'll never let you down. He'll be rock steady. The strongest shoulder you can ever lean on. He'll beam with pride every time you succeed. He'll make your grandkids feel that what they've got to say matters. He'll treat everyone with respect, no matter who you are. He'll get up no matter how many times he's been knocked down. He'll be the worst enemy any bully ever saw. He'll be the best friend you've ever had. He'll love you with all of his heart. And if you give him your cell phone number... He's going to call it. How do we know? Because he's been that way our whole lives. He's been a great father. And we think he'll be a great president. That's definitely not a fine wine or Rob Lowe, because as you saw, it aged quite poorly. Before we go, let's all remember that back in February 2020, when the Democratic primary debate was held in New Hampshire, the Democrats in contention for the nomination even agreed that no one talks about Hunter Biden in such a negative light. And coincidentally, here's the moment that Pete Buttigieg locked up his position as transportation secretary in the Biden administration. Do you think that there's a danger for the Democratic Party to nominate a candidate who is still under the threat of investigation? No, and, and we're not going to let them change the subject. This is not about Hunter Biden or Vice President Biden or any Biden. This is about an abuse of power by the president. Look. The vice president and I and all of us are competing, but we've got to draw a line here. And to be the kind of president, to be the kind of human being who would seek to turn someone against his own son, who would seek to weaponize a son against his own father, is an unbelievably dishonorable thing that is just one more example of why we as a party have to be completely united in doing whatever it takes at the end of the day to make sure that this president does not get a second term. Abuse of power by the president, sure. Draw a line, sure. Seek to weaponize a son against his father, sure. Whatever you say, Petey. Well, that's enough shenanigans for this week. Don't forget to give those Fs, Faith, family, and friends. And of course, please share the video since we are all living in the danger zone these days. Might as well embrace it with everyone you know. Until next time, stay healthy, America.